How often have you heard the term born again? Oh, they've been born again. Praise Jesus. <laughs> or maybe a, a bunch of other churchy words. Redemption, redeemed, saved. See, the, the term born again is one of those words that the church body just absolutely loves to use. The problem is that while most people have an idea in their mind of what they think it means, they don't actually understand its full, true, biblical meaning. And considering being born again is essential to salvation, it seems like a term that we should probably have a proper grasp on. For example, what if I told you that you could be born again without being baptized? See, now I realize that statement right there has already made a few people uneasy. But bear with me as we seek to answer this question and clarify it biblically instead of just going off of what we think it means from some stuff we heard in church. All right, so we're gonna dig into what it means to be born again, and we're gonna do it primarily using the writings of John because there's just a wealth of information to really try and grasp and understand when he speaks of or writes about being born again. But before we do that, we, we kind of need to like jump back thousands of years because we currently live in a culture where who your parents are does not define who you have to become. This really wasn't the case in ancient Near East, and it's important to understand their, their patriarchal or, or household customs when we seek to better understand what it means to be born again. So let's go ahead. We're going to jump in at John 1, 12 and 13, which says, but to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And this is part of the reason why I bring up Israelite culture. See, in the a &E, the patriarch was responsible for the economic well-being of the family. He enforced the law, the rules, and basically had ultimate responsibility to care for the family and often the clan, right? So when a child was born, they were born into the same expectations and social status of their father. So the most important means of attempting to attain wealth or a position of honor was being born or adoption into that family, which gave essentially the same rights as being born into that family. Now, being born into a family also came with a set of expectations and responsibilities. See, children were expected to be obedient and fulfill the responsibilities and meet that status of their family is basically a way of repaying the parents for the gift of birth that they had been so graciously provided. Now, with this in mind, it's important that we take a look at John 8, 39 through 47. Now, bear with me. I'm telling you, it's going to all come together. And it's going to be like, ah, awesome. So in this passage, Jesus is talking to Pharisees who, who don't really understand much of what Jesus is saying. And, and they're trying to basically name drop Abraham as part of their family line, right? Like their father from many generations ago. And John 8, 42 through 45 reads, And Jesus said to them, If God were your father, you would love me, for I came from God and I am here. I came not of my own accord, but he sent me. Why do you not understand what I say? It is because you cannot bear to hear my word. You are of your father, the devil, and your will is to do your father's desires. He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks out of his own character, for he is a liar and the father of lies. But because I tell the truth, you do not believe me. Jesus goes so far as to call them children of the devil. Here's the deal. When you're first born, you are born dead, meaning that your father's the devil. And I know that can be hard to grasp, but, but here's the deal. When God created Adam and Eve, he made them in his moral image, right? Righteous and holy. It was very good. And we know Adam was created full of love and mercy and righteous action and all these good morals because had he not been pure from sin and filled with righteousness and holiness, God would not have said it was very good. Now, when Adam ate of the fruit, he died. Now, he didn't physically die immediately, but his union with God was lost because he sinned and the spirit left him. And because of this, the sin entering the world, it affected all of humankind, right? All of the descendants of Adam. But when we came into this world, we now come into the world spiritually dead. You are then bearing the image of the devil, full of earthly sin and desires. And see, this is why we must be born again. So to become children of God means to become reborn as, as part of his household. So those living in A&E would have seen this as being 
adopted into God's house and given all the blessings, inheritance, and status that comes with being a part of God's household. This is pretty awesome. So this then leads to the question, how does someone become born again? So we're going to we're going to get into John 3 uh, 1 through 10. So in this passage, Nicodemus, who's basically, well, he's not basically, he is a Jew. He's a Jew. He's a Pharisee. Uh, he goes to Jesus under the cover of darkness. And in this conversation, Jesus tells him he must be born again. And Nicodemus, not understanding, is like, well, how am I supposed to do that? Am I supposed to enter my mother's womb again for the second time? And Jesus says to him, truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not marvel that I said to you, you must be born again. Now, let me just stop real quick and say, we're going to address the water and baptism in a minute. But before we get there, let's work through the idea of being born again. Because what we have in this passage really is a contrast between the physical birth, flesh, and the spiritual birth. So let's use this analogy to help us better understand what it all means. When someone is formed in the womb, they are entirely relying on the mother for survival, right? If the mother dies, the baby dies as well. When the child is born, however, they become less dependent on the mother. They go through immediate changes that transform them forever. I mean, I mean, think about it. The child comes out and is exposed to a totally different environment. For the first time, the child will open its mouth and breathe air without the need of their mother. This child has been born to the world. The child now relies on the things of this world for survival, but doesn't necessarily need the mother. This child it grows up and over time hears about, understands, and comes to believe in God. And at some point during this process, the once baby, now older, let's just call her Sarah, asks God into her life and is filled with the Holy Spirit. So many Christians seem to get this wrong, all right? Being born again is not simply praying a prayer in church or with some person and now like, poof, you just magically go to heaven. Like, congratulations, you did the thing and now you're in the door. See, in this example, Sarah has come to believe in God and while she still may have a lot of questions and some doubts, her belief is real and she's asking God to come into her life, to change her and to begin to transform her through the work of the Spirit to better understand God and to help her grow in your relationship with him. So in this case, Sarah has been born again. But this does not mean that instantly Sarah's life will be like drastically different. However, she started down a different path, right? She has been reborn, but is now a metaphorical baby again, if you will. Much, much like how when Sarah came out of the womb and breathed oxygen with her own lungs, her acceptance of Christ and the transforming power of the Spirit will leave her living differently. See, this is not a one prayer ordeal, but the beginning of a new life is as Paul Walker, Paul Walker, nope, Paul Washer, not the actor, but the pastor, as Paul Washer uh, likes to say, salvation is not a flu shot. Like you don't just get it or say the prayer and then all is good. To be born again is to have a spiritual transformation that takes someone out of the household of the devils, and into the household of God. So it's to go from a natural human state where a person has eyes and ears, but doesn't see or hear, right? To a state of acceptance and belief of Christ as your savior and allowing the spirit to, to basically open your eyes and ears to the kingdom of God, bringing you into God's household as one of his children. I wanna return briefly to the conversation between Nicodemus and Jesus. In John 3, 5, Jesus answered, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. Now, now there's many theories uh, floating around out there as to what this means. I just want to briefly touch on, on what it doesn't mean. Jesus is not stating that the way into heaven is by baptism in addition to being born again in the spirit. And how do we know that? Well, here's three quick points that I think will help. Jesus never baptized anybody with water. I mean, think about that for a second, right? Like the man who went around preaching the kingdom of God does not have a single recorded incident where he baptized someone with water. He did go around and, and baptized with the Holy Spirit, right? See, instead of 
water baptism, Jesus spent his three years in ministry teaching that he was the way, the truth, and the life. That's John 14, 6. Not, I'm the way after you get baptized. Second, baptism is a religious work performed by human hands. And if baptism is a requirement for redemption, it would conflict with a lot of other passages in the Bible that speak to salvation by faith alone, right? Ephesians 2, 8, for by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not of your own doing. It is the gift of God, not a result of works so that no one may boast. And third, Jesus openly saves a criminal on the cross during the crucifixion, right? There's two criminals, one on each side in there talking and, and one of them rebukes the other and says, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And he said to him, truly I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. This one verse acts as evidence against the requirement for baptism. Now, of course, there are arguments to all of this, but it's just, yeah, that's probably its own video. So here's what I want you to remember. Water baptism is meant to be an outward symbol of an inward commitment. It represents the true baptism, which is that of the spirit when one is born again. It is the genuine baptism of the spirit which saves us. We should then try and answer the question, if that's the case, then what does Jesus actually mean in, in this passage, right? And it, there's a good, there's a couple good uh, possibilities, but I think D.A. Carson does a does a good job in explaining his understanding in that, that John the Baptist had stirred the nation and he stirred the ministry through stressing the importance of repentance. And, and water then would have reminded Nicodemus of John's emphasis on repentance. So when Jesus tells Nicodemus that in order to enter the kingdom, he needed to be born of the water and spirit, Nicodemus would have or Jesus would have been telling Nicodemus to turn and repent so that he could be regenerated by the Holy Spirit. So in other words, it's through repentance, which would have been seen then at the as the water baptism, through which Nicodemus could find the Spirit, which leads to being born again. So, so to be born again and be called children of God means to, to have that inward change, all right? That real inward change that affects like, the entire existence. When, a, when someone accepts Christ, and I mean like truly, not like, not like I said a prayer in church five years ago. No, I mean like truly accepts Christ and like yearns for that relationship with God and that willingness to just take your entire life and, and turn it over to him, to be able to, to sacrifice the earthly self and have belief. And I don't mean like do a bunch of works and say a bunch of things. I mean like that internal yearning and love, right? Though you might not even understand a lot of it in the beginning, but, but just to have the ability to, to put that faith and realization in Christ that, that he died for, for your sins that have been inherited from the beginning, right? That you may have even lived out uh, up until this very day, that those can all be washed away by the power of his death and resurrection on the cross. Then, and only then, can someone be born again into the kingdom of God as his children, able to live and enjoy all those benefits that come with being a child of the most loving, pure, powerful, just amazing father. A father who's holy and kind beyond our human comprehension. Like no words I can say would even begin to properly put it into context. This is what it means to be born again, all right? And if you if you have this desire to, to commune with God and be filled with the Spirit and you're seeking to be born again and you just, you, you're not quite sure if you have been or you know you haven't been or you don't really understand all, just go to God. Like, man, I, if you're embarrassed or confused, just find some quiet space, go to God and, and begin that talk with him. Begin that relationship with him. All right, go to him and ask, beg if you need to, that he changes you and, and works in you. All right, that he'll fill you with the spirit. Read the Bible, make that daily commitment. All right, daily, you gotta make, make that daily commitment. Even if you're like, I don't even know if I believe in God yet. Well, take time every day, make that commitment to speak with him, even if you don't even know how to pray. That's fine. I'm telling you, just find a quiet spot and just talk to him and read the word and just see what happens, all right? Ask him to come into your life and to show you his ways, all right? I, I hope that was helpful. Man, I really, 
I really do. I, I hope it was. So thanks for watching. Thanks for sticking around to the end. Click here to watch other videos from this channel. That's it. That's all I got.